Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. Welcome, everyone. You are not going to believe this, but we have the world's number one expert today on all things bacon. Yes, Mm -hmm. you heard me right. Bacon. His name is Brian Basilico, but I know him better as a bacon man. In fact, I have been (laughs) working with Brian for many years and calling him bacon man. And everybody that I know thought his last name was really bacon. They thought his name was Brian Bacon. And and Brian, he's not going to say anything different. Um, In addition to being um, known as Bacon Man, he is also the award-winning author of the best-selling book, It's Not About You, It's About Bacon. (laughs) (laughs) And Relationship Marketing in a Social Media World and his latest book, wait for it, Toilet Paper Math. Yes, Toilet Paper Math. Brian was honored as one of the top marketers to follow in 2018. I know I've been following him all this time and learning a lot from him. And you're going to learn so much from Brian today. I just want you to get your pen and paper ready because you're going to be blown away. Brian is an online marketing strategist with over 40 years of marketing experience. And he is the owner of an award-winning internet marketing company called b 2 B, the number two, B, the number, the letter B, the number two, the letter B, B B2B, Interactive Marketing, Inc. He is world renowned for his LinkedIn training, and I will second that all (laughs) the way around the world and back again, um, and his innovative content marketing strategies. And he was one of the first 1,000 people to join the social network in 2004, and he's still there. Brian is a syndicated blogger, podcaster, and a sought-after after guest expert. I know he's sought after because I have had him on (laughs) speak to my group many times and we'll invite him back over and over and over again. He's been featured in Entrepreneur and Inc. magazines with over 600 episodes. His show, The Bacon Podcast, is ranked as one of the top 100 marketing podcasts on iTunes and was also recognized by Inc. magazine as one of their top 35 podcasts business podcast. Brian, welcome. <laughs> I feel I feel like I was waiting for an elevator to come down, you know. <laughs> it's like do 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 do. So, um you guys, this is going to be a, a really fun, um entertaining mm-hmm. and informative podcast cuz Brian and I, we could talk all day long. We have talked for many 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 hours in the past. Mm-hmm. And um I love you, Brian. And and you know, I sincerely mean that. You know that. So, tell uh-huh. us about you. Tell us about how you dared to leap a couple of different times that I know of at least in your oh, life. And man. maybe, you know, fit in how you came up with the bacon man um and toilet paper oh there's there's tons. he has so many stories i'm just gonna I, s- pause pause right here just say go brian and away we go okay <laughs> you know 40 years i feel like i should be saying get off my lawn you know it's <laughs> like uh but no i don't say that um okay so let's see story number one would be last year and that was when I almost died. I was um, all of a sudden went out to dinner with my wife. Everything was fine. Got sick in the middle of the night. And in the morning on Sunday morning, she found me collapsed on the floor in a pile. Um, and she asked me, she says, do you know what happened to you? And I said, I went boom. <laughs> and I had, <laughs> I had sepsis and I was out of it. I mean, I was completely out of it. They immediately put a line down directly into my heart and I was in ICU for four days and I had no clue what hit me. And, and that was, um, you know, that's that was one prior of those, to COVID even, wasn't it? That was, well, it was right when COVID was starting, but nobody knew. Yeah. You know, so I could have had COVID. Who knows? We don't know. That's the whole thing. Um, but one of the things I got to say about that, Kathy, is 
it was a dare to leap moment because I was in the hospital. But you know what? My business kept running. Why did it keep running? Because of you. Why? Because your people were keeping my business churning. They were doing all these projects for me. And I was able to basically be in the hospital and not stress. And, you know, I could actually heal and relax. And, you know, so that was huge. Um, but if we go back all the way to the origins of B2B, which is 20 years ago that I started this business in 2001. Um, the way I started B2B is I was working at an ad agency and this guy decided that he wanted to use my laptop for a presentation and I got pissed because like my laptop was my business. You know, it's like, I can't, what am yeah. I going to sit here and twiddle my thumbs? You know, I can't do anything. Yeah. So I got angry at him and I said, dude, you know, it's like, you know, and then, then he went and told, you know, the things that I said to the boss, the boss calls me upstairs and fires me. And so here I am about to get married. It was a week before my wedding to my wife. We've been married 20 years this year. And wow. I just got fired. We just built a new house. And it's oh like, my gosh, what? The, and it was it's a big house with a big mortgage. And I'm going, Okay, Ooh. I ain't gonna find a job that quick. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna get off my butt and I'm gonna start my own business again. Now this was the third or fourth time I've started my own business. I mean, I had a recording studio back in the 1990s, I sold that. Um, I, I had a recording studio back in the 1970s and I ended up going to work for AT&T and I've worked for Arthur Anderson and all this other stuff. But I, I just decided to pick myself up by my bootstraps and 20 years later, here I'm sitting, you know. Who, your own boss for how many years now? Well, 20 in this in, iteration. In this business, mm -hmm. yeah. Congratulations. And Thank you. Um, Brian, are you any longer employable? No, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> no congratulations <laughs> you choked me up <laughs> employ no um uh i'm completely unemployable my wife even says me to me, do says, you cannot play in that sandbox anymore i will not let mm -mm. you play in that sandbox mm -mm. because i don't you know basically i don't put up with the bs i don't like the politics i don't like all the other stuff that goes along with it i did have a the last corporate job I had was at Arthur Anderson. And there was a woman who sat next to me who literally spent her entire life trying to undermine me. And oh, she did it. She did I know it. that. I know that woman. Yeah, <laughs> she did. I mean, she was doing everything she could know, to undermine me. I know me. the type. And oh. and I ended up getting, you know, I mean, I, let, I got let go. You know, they fired me <laughs> there too. Um, but it was like, it was a amicable, you know, let go. Mm. Um, Unlike the last one where. It, yeah, no, that was, know. that was just flat out brutal. It was just like, you know, you're out mm -hmm. of here. I'm sorry. Get, you know, I'm sorry. Can't keep you employed anymore. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, no, I am totally unemployable and, and you know what? I'm loving every minute of it. Cause here's the thing about it. When you work a job, the job basically has a box and you've got to fit inside that box. The one thing I've been able to do over the course of the last 20 years is basically adapt to whatever's happening in the world. When I started in 2001, there was no Facebook, there was no LinkedIn, there was no, I mean, the internet was barely there. I was doing business card CDs at the time. So, mm, you know, yeah. It, yeah, there was podcasting wasn't a thing. None of this stuff was nope. around. There was no Zoom. <laughs> no, God, no. No. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I mean, I've used go to meeting for probably 12 years, 15 years before I got yep. into Three, four Me too. Ago. So I've been doing it for 15 years, but I mean, it was expensive. It was, you know, it was like, 12, oh my gosh, I know. Yeah, Zoom's so much cheaper. Oh God. Yeah. It's only yeah. like, you know, it's $115 a month. I mean, it's beautiful. So, yeah. you know, and technology is so different too. You know, we didn't have, oh, sorry about that. I got to kill this. That's okay. Um, That happens, you know, but yeah, um, mine will probably be next. Yep. <laughs> and um, whoever it was, I'm sure they're just calling about my car warranty. I've gotten four calls today. <laughs> Your social security number has been compromised. Please press one to talk, you know, and then as soon as I pick up the phone. And it, yeah, and the, my favorite part of that one about the social security number is mm -hmm. the police will be at your front door momentarily to arrest you if you do not press one. 
<laughs> oh, I've been pressing one. I just talked to him. It's like, you know, do you have a case number? No. Click. They hang up. You know, one guy got as far as what's your name? I said, you're so Jones. funny. He click. He hung up. You know, it's like, because <laughs> I just want to. You, you like know, to I mess like, with people. I like playing with these guys, you know, because I know what the hell's going on. I mean, I literally, I was on the phone with IDES today because I got insurance fraud. You know, somebody filed a claim. Oh, I've gotten no. two claims filed against me. One in Ohio oh, and gosh. one in Indiana. They changed my address to Indiana. I had to go through all that crap. So owning a oh, business is gosh. fun, but it has its challenges. Yeah. So um, what do you, uh, all the, all your ability to be fluid and flexible mm -hmm. and shift as things change. And, you know, since I didn't realize you and I started our businesses the same year, 2001 is when I started mine. Mm -hmm. Also, we both worked at AT&T. No wonder mm -hmm. we like each other. We're both crazy. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> you have to be crazy to work at AT&T. <laughs> Um, I think the crazy ones are the ones that stay. We got out of there. Yes, we um, did. Yes, I did. I got out <laughs> at the right time. Yes. Yeah. Now me too. Um, so what do you think has helped you be able to make all these shifts and shift and shift and be so fluid and flexible and adapt? What's helped me is I've always been a knowledge sponge. I've always sat down and tried to learn things myself and tried to keep a you know, keep up to date with what's happening in the world. So I read a lot, you know, the beauty of doing a podcast, I get to interview people and get their opinions and see what's happening. And, you know, even when COVID hit last year, I mean, like most other businesses, my clients just went, you know, they tank, they all said, we're done, we can't do anything, you know, we have no business. And, you know, so I, I learned to adapt and say, okay, here's why you need to do this. Let's enter our way back into it. And when we're all said and done, the clients I worked with had probably the best years they've ever had um, because we used... and, and I believe you had your best year by far, too, didn't you? I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So that debunks that myth of, you know, well, COVID hit and we couldn't work you had to be fluid and flexible and make shifts. Exactly. Yes. yes. Yeah. I started the year. I said, don't panic pivot. And everybody hated the word pivot by the third month. You know, it's like, I right. don't want to pivot. <laughs> yeah. But you know, pivoting is putting your foot in one place and then basically moving your other foot around to figure out where you're going to pass the ball. You know, you got to have yeah. that grounded foot. Otherwise you're called for traveling. Right. right? So, right. You know, that's essentially what you have to do is what's work. What do I have that is important right now? And then where do I address, you know, the needs and where are they? And that was what I was mm -hmm. able to do was help the clients understand the needs. And luckily, right. the businesses I worked with were in, you know, key industries, transportation, medical, those kind of things where they were essential. And so mm -hmm. rather than scaling back, I said, no, 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 no. You need to actually get out in front because everybody else is scaling back. If you get out in front and start talking about your business and letting people know that you're still there, you're still serving, you're working hard, you're doing everything for them, they will come to you and leave the other companies. And that's exactly what happened. You know, they let the other yes. company, they let people know we're open for business. We're here to solve your problems. We'll figure it out. And that's exactly yeah. what they did. And that's exactly why my business grew, because the more they started to see, whoa, this is working, the more they kept spending, you know, and, yeah. and actually, and I call it investing, you know, marketing should always be an investment. Bottom line with marketing is if you cannot figure out how to turn a dollar into $3, don't do it, period. Yeah. You know, and that's yep. essentially what you have to do. So that's my job as a strategist is to come in and say, okay, you know, I'll give you a clear example of one client who, you know, came to me and said, they said, hey, Brian, you know, we're spending a hundred thousand dollars a year. What the heck are we getting for our money? I said, I don't know. Let me look at what you're spending it on. So I took a look at what they were spending it on and they were spending it on SEO and they were spending it on at Google ads and all these other things. And I said, OK, let's try something. Let's kill the Google ads, $5,000 a month. See what happens. After three months, guess how much business they lost? Zero? Zero. Wow. I only yeah. guessed that because I'm like, well, what would be the craziest scenario? Nothing. They lost wow. nothing. Wow. Because and the they Google saved ads, all that money. They saved $60,000. And so what can you do with that $60,000 that will actually give you the ROI? 
you know, but they didn't know they, the other company with, who was using that stuff was telling them, Hey, it's driving traffic to your websites, doing all this great stuff. You know, you're getting hits, you're getting, you know, the problem is the hits they were getting were all tire kickers. And that, mm-hmm. that breaks down to the, uh, the toilet paper math book. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about, let's talk, we'll get to the bacon, but let's talk toilet paper math. <laughs> all right. Okay. You walk into the grocery store or Target or wherever, and you look, and they're now, I mean, it used to be, remember when toilet paper was like in one little section, you had your Kleenex and your paper towels, and now the toilet paper is all, it's like a whole damn aisle, right? And that whole damn aisle, and you're looking at things, and it says 9 equals 36, and 8 equals 64, and 5 equals 120, and you're looking at these packages going, what the heck does that mean? But what they're doing is they're saying that, you know, these these eight rolls are worth 64 rolls. You're getting four rolls per, all right? But yeah. what they don't tell you is that toilet paper originally was four and a half inches square, okay? Over the course of the last handful of years, you probably didn't notice it, just like you didn't realize that eight ounce jar got down to 5.5. Um, a, a toilet paper square is now 4.1 inches wide by 3.7 inches tall. Right, oh, wow. they're putting less on. That's a roll. why you have to use more. Right, they're putting less on a roll. They're putting more, the less on the sheets. They're putting more on a roll, and they're telling you uh-huh. you're getting more for less. Mm-hmm. When actually yeah. you're paying more per roll than you did before. Yeah, but the and mat- the rolls are too big to fit on my old um, toilet paper holders. Yeah, that's why you got to buy a new house to get better toilet paper holders. Right. <laughs> So, you know, that's the point behind this is like they're 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 convincing you that you're getting more when mm-hmm. really you're getting less and paying more. And mm-hmm. I, I give this example with uh, online marketing. It's like, you know, SEO. I'm not anti SEO. I'm not anti Google ads. I do them for all my clients. Right. There's, there's nothing wrong right. with them. But, you know, I get customers who come to me, you know, and say, hey, you know, our traffic has gone down. I said, OK, your sales up. They go, yeah. What's the problem? You know, somebody comes yeah. to me and says, I want more traffic to my website. Not a problem. I'll get you a million visitors tomorrow for $500. You want that? million visitors to your website for 500 bucks. Yeah. Sounds absolutely. good. There's only two problems. You have to have your website translated to Farsi and Russian, and none of them will buy from you. <laughs> I think that's going to be your next book. That no, I don't know what the title will be. Will be. Oh, that's it is in, in the toilet paper map. Yeah, okay. That's in, yeah, that's in toilet paper math. It's basically it's like what are you measuring? <laughs> what are you doing? What makes sense, right? Yeah, right. And so the bottom line is is that everything that you do in business should lead to sales. Everything in marketing should lead to sales. If you cannot track how that is generating business, then don't do it. You know, stop mm-hmm. doing it and figure out a way to do something that you can literally track to making money. That's mm-hmm. that's what business is super, super simple. You take a dollar, you turn it into three, right? It And the reason I say three, it's one dollar to pay for the dollar. It's another yep. dollar to pay for your time because you got to pay for your time. And that third dollar okay. is your profit. And the profit is what gives you the ability to scale and grow, right? If you're just making yep. two dollars off every dollar, you're not going to get anywhere. You're basically going to be, you know, peddling in space you know if you only mm-hmm. make one dollar for every dollar you spend you're gonna go bankrupt really quick because you're gonna be spending a lot of time <laughs> you're right. not gonna make any profit right so yeah you know, that's right the goal is you've got to be able to figure out how do i make money doing this yeah and that's the key you know that's that's what yeah. a business is so you know when we start talking about business in general one of the key things that i learned a long long time ago is how to do my own books to this day i still do my own books every saturday morning i am anal about this i go in i balance everything and why do i do that because i can actually see where i'm making money where i'm losing money what's going on in my business from a micro and macro view it's huge you know, you've got to understand that if you hand it off to an accountant and you only get quarterly reports, you have no idea what's happening over the course of three months. By the time you get that report, and if you don't know how to read a balance sheet and a profit and loss statement, you're looking and saying, I made money. I didn't make money. 
why? You know, that's really the key. I'll give you a clear cut example of this. I started back in 2000, 2001. And the first thing I was doing was business card CDs. And I was making CDs and I was burning CDs for people. And about three, four years into it, all of a sudden my CD burner crapped out. This was a $6,000 CD burner. But guess what? The cost of CD burners went way down. I could buy a replacement for only $3,000, right? Half the deal. Awesome. I went back and looked at my books and said, how much did I make burning CDs last year? Guess how much I made? 300 bucks. 3,000? 300. 300. <gasps> okay. Does it make sense to buy a CD burner at that point? No, you go find oh, somebody no. else. You go find somebody else who can do the CDs for you if you need mm -hmm. them, right? Right. You know, I'm out of the CD burning business. So that's yeah. that's one of the things about working with you that makes the most sense is I'm really good at some things. I'm not so good at other things. My nickname is Captain Typo. I suck. <laughs> I'm going to give myself a nickname, Princess Typo, because yeah, I'm not yeah. bad at typing, but I don't catch the typos. Well, see, I, I have a, I actually have a superhero uh, persona. It's Captain Typo and Lexi for, and at the bottom it says dyslexics untie, uh, because I can't uh, see them. I cannot see the errors uh, for weeks. So I are you dyslexic, Brian? Uh, I think so. Yes. Oh, I didn't know that. So that, yeah, yeah um, you know, that some of the smartest people ever are dyslexic, right? So yeah, congratulations. I, I, I should have figured it, that out. I call it DDA. It's ADD and dyslexia. You know, it's like I've got both. <laughs> and um, and the reason I say that is because I can look at things and never, never, never see it. And so, you know, I've been sending out the, I do my broadcast email every single week. Julie McNulty, who you turned me on to as a VA, she does that for me every single week. Send them out all the time. She's Fabulous. See, that's one of the things. I don't have to worry about it. Julie, she proofreads and posts my blog. She does my email marketing for me. And that's kept my business going, right? Even when I was in the hospital, she kept it going. Um, yeah. It didn't matter. Uh, but one of the things that I missed, and even she missed, was the fact that on coffee and bacon, it said something, something, something businesses. And I misspelled businesses. And, and last week, somebody said, uh, by the way, on your email, businesses is, is misspelled in the graphic. And, you know, I sent it to Julie this morning. I said, oh, by the way, I forgot that. Here's a new graphic to put up there. And she goes, oh, my God, I feel so bad. I missed it. I was like, Julie, <laughs> I was the one who made it. I didn't see it. It took, <laughs> it took the grammar police to let me know, you know. So you can't yes. be bad. It just blows by yeah. us, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I I wear it like a badge of honor, you know. It's like I make mistakes. It's okay, you know. Yeah, you have to give me too. Permission. Progress, not perfection, Brian. Progress, exactly. not perfection. I know you believe in that. Yeah. If somebody, you know, somebody does want to do business with me because I forgot an S in the word businesses, I'm sorry. You know, I saw. Yeah, that, it, glad we found out now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Because you're not going to want to work with me because right. I don't care about that. Is right. that going to cost? Is that going to help you earn three times more than you're already earning? No. So, if that's what worries you, you're not a good fit for me anyway. Right. So you know, the bottom line for me and what's grown my business is the ability to find people that can handle you know the tasks that they're good at. You know, and I've gotten so many. I, right now, I think I've I've got maybe five or six people from you that are working with and for me doing different things. And, yeah, virtual experts. Yeah. And they love working with you, Brian. They but, they rave about working with you. They enjoy it. Well, because I want to teach them and I want to give them and I, I honestly want to give them a way to make more money, you know, because I understand it. I understand business. I understand how to read mm -hmm. books. And I always tell mm -hmm. them up front, I say, look, the first job is going to be hard. Second job is going to get easier and the third job is going to get even easier. And the key thing is, is that we get it to a point where I, you know, you bill me for a project and, you know, when you first start, it may take you two hours and then it goes down to an hour and maybe it takes a half hour, but you're still billing the same amount. And the bottom line is the first job, you may lose a little money. The next job you're making what you're expecting by the third or fourth or fifth job, all of a sudden you're making double what you were making before because it takes you half the time, you mm -hmm. know? And that's what I like. I like giving people the opportunity to make more money because they're happy, mm -hmm. right? 
Yeah. And they like doing the work and they get trained mm -hmm. by me to do that work. You know, it's like, here's what mm -hmm. you need to do. Here's how you do it. Here's how you systematize. And that's what I'm specializing in is systematizing all of this stuff. And so what I love about that, Brian, is it's a win-win for everyone. Exactly. You win, the people that work for you, with you win, and those that you do work for win. Everybody wins. You're creating more money that's spinning around this world for everybody to have a better life. And I yep. love that. That's exactly it. It's my customers. If I can make my customers more money, and if I can make my VAs or assistants or, or technicians happy, and mm -hmm. I'm making money in the middle of all of this stuff, it is a win, 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 win all the way around. You know, that's the key. It all starts with making my customers money. I've got to come up with a system that makes them the money. And then from there, then I have to figure out a way to make the virtual assistants happy or, you know, the people that you you hand me, the assistants, the technicians. Uh -huh. And from there, then I've got to find that happy balance where everybody is happy and I'm still, you know, I'm still running a business where I am turning mm -hmm. $1 into three in the middle, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I want to backtrack to something that you mentioned, um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of about all of this, which is, um, looking at things that used to be working that aren't working anymore, mm -hmm. or maybe they were never working as well as we thought they were because they weren't really turning into paying clients. They were just a lot of, uh, clicks, leads, whatever. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I see a lot of people struggling with right now are Facebook ads. Yes. Are you seeing that? Yes. What do you, and I love your predictions. I love what you see coming up. So what do you predict is happen is going to happen with that? And what do you recommend? Is there anything in general that you recommend or does it have to be really customized? to? Well, industry? the problem with any kind of advertising is the back end system. It's always the back end system. And the way that Facebook serves up their ads is very, it's an enigma. You know, everything in Facebook, is <laughs> yes. um, and it changes without telling you anything. And they give you no mm -hmm. reason why. I'll give you a perfect example of that. I've been doing my caption contest and quote of the day for eight, 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. um, the other day, I did a caption contest quote of the day and a picture of my dog, which Lord knows, I put up a picture of my dog, I get 100 likes. I got zero. Your I dog is really cute. Thank you, Layla. Yeah, she's a sweetie. She but is so cute. But I put up a picture of my dog, a caption contest, and I got nothing, nothing, <gasps> nothing. And yeah, I and, and I know because I look at those all the time, too. You guys, if you haven't seen Brian's caption contest, <laughs> um, I just want you to think about what are the craziest pictures you have ever seen, like really nutso. Mm -hmm. Those are the pictures he posts to ask for captions. It is always my, the highlight of my day. So what happened when nobody happened? liked it? What happened was is somehow, some way, Facebook decided to go in and turn my account into only me. So only I could see what I was posting. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I figured it out, but then I had to go back to all those other ones and undo them and fix it. Yeah. And, you know, and, and so that's what Facebook does. So when it comes to Facebook advertising, the algorithms are getting harder and harder and harder. First and foremost, um, people, can choose to opt in and out of ads and people don't go on Facebook. You know, nobody gets up in the morning and says, you know, I'm going on Facebook to look for ads. That's not what they're doing. <laughs> nobody does. <laughs> no. And, you know, and there's so much competition in every single space with ads, you know, and, and so what it boils down to, and then this is the way I built my business and this is the way I do everything is on relationships, you know, so, it's who you know that who you know that who you know. Um, so when I share something and other people are sharing things, that's really what gets that organic side of things tends to work a lot better. So Facebook ads, Google ads, you cannot, you can put them up, you can target your audience, but you have no control over how they display, who sees them, whether the audience is really what they're saying they're doing. So one of the things you have to do is find a way to blend the personal organic stuff with the business stuff. 
in order to get the reaped rewards that you're looking for. And somehow or another, your ads have to be associated. One of the things you do, Kathy, very well is you have your own personal brand. My God, the tiara, you know, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, it's fabulous. But that oh, personal brand is what is going to make the difference on the ads. So you really have to invest more in that personal brand in order to enhance what the ads can do. If you're spending a lot of time working on just the ads, it's really tough. And it, and again, it depends on, you know, the space that you're playing in. I mean, you're playing in a probably one of the most saturated spaces on all social media platforms, and that is coaching. Right? Yes, I agree. Even though you're not a coach coach, but it is that right. platform that is there. Right. You know, so whether you're doing it on LinkedIn, you're doing it on Facebook, you're doing it on Google, it is just so hard to stand out and, mm -hmm. and get the message across with anything that right. you're doing. So the organic stuff makes all the difference in the world. And um, are you still really pro LinkedIn? Oh, God, yeah. Are you still loving LinkedIn? Yeah. I'm so tell us it. about why. What? Why is LinkedIn so fabulous? And any tips you have for people? how to how to make LinkedIn work for them? Well, LinkedIn, LinkedIn really is about connecting with people and starting personal relationships. So and it's about um, so for example, one of the things that I did today, uh, well, well, here, here's a basic, basic, very simple tip. Facebook and LinkedIn both give you everybody's birthday, every single day, go in and wish everybody a happy birthday. What does that do? That creates a one on one connection with somebody, you know, and that's really what it boils down to. If you want to do business, you need to create and build those one on one connections. That's what relationship marketing is. OK, LinkedIn is a great platform for numerous reasons. Number one, when you message somebody, they not only get that message inside of LinkedIn, but they get an email saying somebody messaged you. So today I added this thing. I, I joined this group. It's called Pay It Forward Tuesdays. I'm one of six consultants that basically give an hour a month or a half hour a month to a nonprofit or for profit business and basically consult them and say, you know, based on what I'm seeing with your business, here's a quick tip that I think that would make a difference in your world. And so I added into um, my LinkedIn profile that I'm now a founding um, a founding partner of Pay It Forward Tuesday. And LinkedIn immediately put out that I had a new position. All right. I have yes. probably two, 300 people say congrats. Mm, interesting. Yeah. And it, so it's it, like it immediately, the way that it connects with people, the algorithms in there based on what you do, give you the opportunity to have those offline connections that you really want to have because business does not happen on social media business happens over the phone in person and potentially over email that's where you want everything to lead to you have never sold anything without a personal phone call or I, I doubt you sold a lot without some kind of personal phone call. I haven't I haven't sold anything without a personal connection right. I, I'm with you Brian I, I have not yeah so that's essentially what you need to do is if you want to build you know great connections you've got to invest time in it it, it, it is basically it's the relationship bank the more time you put into the relationship bank the more return on investment you will get I also find it a lot more fulfilling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it would be nice if people just clicked a link and bought, 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 and my bank account was filling up. But would mm -hmm. I feel fulfilled? Probably not. I would, no. you know, money isn't everything. It really isn't. It, it's not what makes us happy. No, I, I like having money. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Well, we're all in business to make money. I mean, let's face it. You That's know, right. You know, even nonprofits are nonprofits is, is right. a um, um, what do you call it? No, oxymoron, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They use oxy. <laughs> They're morons. Right. They use way too much oxy in their laundry and they bleach everything. Um, a nonprofit. That's is, your next book title. <laughs> oxymoron. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be an oxymoron. Um, That's right. You know, 
they, they still have to make a profit. They still have to take in money. It's the way that they do it that's different. It's just a 501c6 or 501c3. You know, it, it's just a status. But they still have to run it like a business. Right. And I think that's one of the key things. This is, Kathy, this is what I love about you. And this is what I tell everybody. And this is, you're going to be on my LinkedIn Live. And this is basically what I tell everybody. I have worked with a lot of virtual assistants over the course of my years. All right. The one thing I know about the people that you send to me is they are prepared and understand business. There are Thank other you. VAs that I've gotten that I've worked with that, you know, their kids got sick and they didn't do anything or, you know, they had to do this or they had to, or they forgot, you know, and, and trying to get things done on a schedule, it got wonky. You know, some things would mm -hmm. get done, some things wouldn't, some things would never get done. I get the apologies. I'm sorry. You know, yada, 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 yada. And the thing is, is that I can't do that to my customers. I can't go to no. my customers and say, hey, you know, my, my assistant's kid got sick. You know, what I need right. my assistant to come to me and say, I'm in the hospital with my kid. Help me out. I'll go find somebody yes. else to do the work. It's like, yeah, you go take care of your family. Let me get it done and we'll connect Absolutely. up when, when you get out, you know, but right. that communication, the understanding of That's how right. to bill, the understanding of how to manage their time, you know, and yes. not surprise the heck out of you and live right. up to their commitments is huge. You know, that's running a yeah. business that is understanding the box that we're in. Yeah, absolutely. That's what you bring to the table. You bring oh, thank that you. Yeah, that's document. that's how I think the my training is different than other VA training. Other VA training focuses on helping people learn skills like how to do bookkeeping, how to write, right. how to run Infusionsoft. I don't do that. I teach how to build your business as a professional, problem solving, proactive, virtual assistant yep and that makes all so, the difference thank you in the for world. that no well it's thank true. you for that yeah it's that's what so makes so um for your um target market let's just mm -hmm. talk about who your target market is for a minute mm -hmm. b2b that's your target market right business to business yes so talk a little bit more about that and the type of people you really help because i want people listening to this to go Hmm, I really want to work with Brian, but I know he's very picky on who he works with. He is very picky who he works with. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> well, and luckily, talk about that a little bit. You give me a bunch of people to interview, and I get a chance to connect with them and talk to them and see, you know, how they are. Okay, so the B two B space generally is a company that sells services or or products to other companies, and they're not people that sell direct to consumer. So, you know, one of the companies I work with sells labels and packaging and machinery to companies that make food stuff that do sell to consumers. Um, the, you know, another company I work with sells directly to Walgreens and Walmart and Lowe's and those kind of things. Um, AT&T stores, those kind of things. So they're, they're companies that work with other companies, um, but they're not working directly to consumer. The reason that is important is a handful of things. Number one, um, they understand business. Number two, they understand budgeting. They understand that it takes money to make money. And number three, they understand the concept of ROI. All right, they're not, they, they know that in their world, every relationship is a long-term relationship. The biggest difference between business to consumer and business to business, I try to explain it this way. In business to consumer, if I go to the store and buy the wrong kind of toilet paper, I sleep on the couch. Trust me, it's happened. It's happened. Um, oh my gosh, Brian, your wife and my husband must be very similar because <laughs> I bought I bought the wrong toilet paper and I still have not heard the end of it. And it was like a year ago. Yeah, I went, you know, she said, go buy some toilet paper. I ran into Walgreens and bought the nice <laughs> and I brought it home and she looks at me and she holds it up and goes, you're going to Walmart right now. You're going to get Northern. Get your ass out of the house. <laughs> That's what my husband likes too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I had to That's go out amazing. and buy it, right? That's the worst thing that can yeah. happen is you sleep on the couch, okay? In B2B, <laughs> if you buy the wrong toilet paper, you're fired. You lose your Ooh. job. Ooh. 
So the the decision tree inside a B2B is very different. It takes them a lot longer to trust you, but when they trust you, they stick with you longer. Mm, I like that. I like loyalty. Yeah, I do too. And, and I don't thing, mind if it takes a little while to build it. No, I have no problem with it. It takes years sometimes. I mean, there are times where I will speak at a conference. I'll talk about my book to a local chamber of commerce. And somebody will call me up. It's like, yeah, I heard you speak up in St. Charles about, oh, four years ago. And I'm ready. And I'm going, ready for what? <laughs> it's like, you know, four years ago, things were so different. <laughs> I have no idea what I was doing four years ago. What might you be referring to? Yeah, but, you know, it, that's fine. They've been following me. They've been listening to the podcast. Yes. And, you know, they, they, yeah. they have a sense of where they want to go. But it takes time. You know, it takes time to build that relationship. It takes time to build trust. It takes time to yes. build all of the things that are necessary. Consumers are very picky. They make a choice. You know, today it is they're buying Powerade. Tomorrow they're buying Gatorade. And the next day they're buying, you know, um, fresh water or something. You know, they change. Except their our mindset. spouses and they're always going to buy northern toilet paper. Yeah, well, it's true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, unless, of course, now, you know, the beauty, one, my wife said the only good thing that happened in 2020 was we have Amazon Fresh that delivers to the house now. So we don't have to go nice. anywhere. Yeah. So it's a beautiful thing. So we, you know, that bottom is. line, place an order and the groceries are delivered to the front door. And guess what? If they don't have no northern toilet paper, she will get Charmin because she's in <gasps> charge of it. Oh, mm -hmm. No, Charmin, Charmin doesn't fly here. Yep. It was Charmin her choice. does not she, fly here. You bought it. You end up <laughs> Bottom line. You won't be me, surprised. You won't be surprised that Amazon Fresh does not deliver here. <laughs> I'm not surprised at all. Yeah. Well, we we got lucky. I mean, my daughter's had it for years and we're, you know, in the far, far western suburbs of Chicago. So when that came, she yeah, I mean, she's on there once a week ordering stuff. But the cool thing is I get some great my wife made this pasta fajoule. She's never made pasta fajoule before. Oh my god. I saw so that bad. on your Facebook page. Has oh, she posted the recipe yet? No. And she keep I keep bugging her about it. It is so I, good. I added to the pile on of we want <laughs> yes. the recipe. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yep. That so, looked so amazing. It was amazing. It, it tasted as good as it looked. So, but anyway, so that's that's the bonus side of things. So, you know, the consumer side, people make change very quickly. Business wise, they stick around a lot longer. And so, but they understand, you know, it's a business. You know, everything is done in sequence. Everything is done. There's systems. They understand systems. They work well with systems. You know, the systems I have for my clients is we're doing social media posting Monday, Wednesday, Friday. We're doing email blasts Tuesdays and Thursdays. We're doing ebooks, blog posts. Um, I just started working with Lori doing email drips. The email drips have been amazing. I mean, they've, they've actually, um, you know, that's one of the things that I changed systems and I called you up and said, I need somebody who knows active campaign. You gave me two people. And I've interviewed a handful of them and said, okay, I want this person. I want this person. They're in my stable now. Um, you know, and not that the they're work... horses, not that no, they're no, no, horses. no, 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 they're not horses. <laughs> they are work horses. They do great. They work. are work. Uh, I know Lori is a work. I almost didn't refer her to you. You know that, right? Yeah, <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know you were very hesitant to do it, but you know, the thing I about saved what my she... best, I saved my best people for me. Yeah, but the, the thing about it is, I mean, I get her, you know, she comes in, she does her thing, and then she can go back to doing your thing. It's not like I'm going to you know, steal right. her from I'm, you. I'm happy to share. Yeah, I'm I know. Well, you give me you give me the good stuff, you know. It's like, yeah. You, That's you, right. You, you do get the good stuff. Ferrara Rocher chocolate, man. You hand me the Ferrara Rochers, none of this Hersey crap, you know. It's like you give That's me right. Stuff. That's right. Yeah, so. So the B2B market is who you serve, and mm -hmm. I, we know it's marketing, Right. It, but exactly what are you helping them do? You're helping them not get uh, the the Russians that aren't going to buy anything right. who are just trolling. You help them get. I'll summarize it in a very simple way. What I do is I bridge the gap between marketing and sales. When you think about marketing and sales, especially, and you worked at at t in the corporate world, marketing is on one side, sales is on the other side. They're usually separated the building. I, I love to use Congress as an example. Uh, marketing is marketing is the house and sales is the Senate. All right. 
And there's usually less salespeople than there are marketing people. And one of my favorite ways of describing uh, the difference between sales and marketing is a uh, Ernest Hemingway was asked to write a six word ad. And the six word ad is baby shoes for sale, never worn. That, it. That, that has always just broken my heart. Yeah. to hear that it's right. so powerful in six it's words. so powerful and emotional in six words okay that's what salespeople need you hand that to the marketing department and here's what you get now available patent leather shoes with great support the hell your children child grow up great they're on sale and they're ready and available with shipping in third 14 colors and they're wonderful get them now <laughs> limited Same time ad. discounted price uh, and all of that yes features and benefits benefits and features so what right. i do is basically i create marketing that listens to what the salespeople are hearing from their audience and use that to help them create conversations so what we're doing is we're creating ebooks blogs podcasts all whatever it is webinars and that stuff is being posted on their personal linkedin side and that personal LinkedIn side, when they post it, their audience, their clients, their direct clients are seeing their stuff. And what's happening is they may not need what they're directly posting, but they say, you know what? I need to call them up, place an order for this because we're running low. Or, oh, I didn't know you guys did that. Let's have a conversation about it. You know, so what I'm doing is I'm producing content that lets the salespeople have conversations with their current customers. Wow, I love that because um, I was actually in marketing at AT and T. That's what I did, mm -hmm. and um, I and I totally agree with your an analogy there. And my oldest son has been in sales at AT and T for most of his career, mm -hmm. and they always seem to not get along, right? Yeah. Because they don't work well together. And right. what you're talking about is bridging that gap, not only working well together, but actually helping sales. That's oh, awesome. Marketing should be driven by what sales needs. That's the yes. only thing that matters because sales is yeah. the only thing in a business that matters. Mm -hmm. You know, you could market yourself, but if nobody buys, who cares? Right. You know? Right. Wow. That is really powerful. And anybody listening, if you want to get in touch with Brian to find out more about working, if you have a B2B business and you want to learn about working with him, Brian, how do they get in touch with you? Well, the easiest way is go to the interwebs, type in Brian Basilico, and you will find everything. There's only two Brian Basilicos. There's one actually in Southern Illinois who's a, a college hockey player, and there's me. Um, I think there might be another one. Of Italy. course, they, the other one has to be in Illinois with you. That right, is so exactly. wild, isn't it? I know. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It's crazy. But um, <laughs> but the bottom line is you type in Brian Basilico, you'll see my speaking site, you'll see my book site, you'll see my books on Amazon, you'll see the podcast, you'll see my websites, all of those things. They're all there. Um, so there's, you know, that's the easiest way to find me. Connect with me on Facebook, connect with me on LinkedIn. I love that kind of stuff. You want to follow me on Facebook, you get the caption contest the quote of the day. You follow me on LinkedIn, you'll get, you know, Kathy live this Saturday morning coming up. So um, you're going to be on my live show at 10 a.m. And, um, and other great guests, you know, the interviews and things that I do are, are fun and amazing. And I can't wait to interview you this weekend. I'm super excited to Hello. be on there. Sorry, I've got this going off here. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Beep. Is it about a car warranty? Or is it the Social Security Agency? It's gotta be one of these. So it was it was actually our friend who um retired. He also retired from AT and T ah. and moved to Guatemala. <laughs> he moved to oh. Guatemala. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it just no. reminds me of the time I was actually supposed to do some music for a neighbor's uh, Caribbean party. And when we're down in Mexico, uh, you know, I remember this one song kept singing, one ton of melon, one ton of melon. <laughs> you know, and I was looking for that song. That's just the way I knew it. And my wife said to me, she goes, Brian, she goes, Google it. And I put in one ton of melon. <laughs> I said, you know, Caribbean song, one ton of mail, and it comes up Guantanamea. And it's like, I found the song, <laughs> even though it had the wrong lyrics. I love that. That yeah. That is the brilliance of those interwebs, isn't it? Yeah. And that's so, really so my wife. She's the Google <laughs> queen. She's Brian, just Google it. Just shut up. Google that's it. Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. So I'm going to give a shout out to your wife. 
her name's Kim. Am I right? Yes. Right. Oh, it's a miracle. I remembered it. Kim, we want your recipe. I know. Recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, she's I'm I still bug her on it. It's like she's terrible with it. The problem with her recipe is she gets a recipe and then she just dumps stuff in there Fingers. and she tries to remember what yeah. the heck she did. And she's like nervous to put it out there because it's not gonna be as good as what she did. That's I will, why it we takes will her all swear long. I will not hold you responsible if there are any errors. So. Thank you. Yeah. The other thing about my wife, and I love her to death, and she knows this, she, she is a professional procrastinator. It's what she does um yeah so um she 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 avoids things sometimes but that's okay but that's why i'm here because i'm here to systematize her that's life. right you do not procrastinate <laughs> i've never seen you procrastinate on anything nope so brian i know i gotta i know i have to let you go i could interview you for hours on end um well, I you're would always love welcome to have, to have me back, back and talk about some other that, stuff i'd love to that's what i was going to say we will do that absolutely we're going to have you back um, I can't believe it took us this long. Uh, <laughs> I know when we booked you, you're like, what? How long I have to wait? <laughs> yeah. It's a whatever, you know, it's like when you need me, I'm there. That's right. Well, we will book you again. We will do a follow up on Kim's recipe during yes. that podcast. I might even um, I'm looking for it in the notes, you know, you never know. Yeah. Next time I come, yes. I'll just hold it up and I'll show everybody. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to being interviewed by you on LinkedIn Saturday. And in the meantime, anybody who wants to follow Brian, learn more about Brian, um, we're going to have all of his links in the show notes. And I just want to give another reason. I mean, there are a lot of reasons to, to follow you, to look at your website and all that. You have tons of free resources and oh, yeah. really valuable information. Including your... interviews with you. Two great interviews with you. <laughs> yeah it's because always a party time <laughs> it well it's just true the bottom line is i bring in really great people and interview them and learn yes, you, you know that's how i keep learning is by talking to people like you and, and learning to grow my business and uh, imagine taking kathy and doing that like 300 times 300 different interviews with 300 kathy style people just imagine how much stuff is out there and all brian all the time Woo! <laughs> Anytime I need an energy lift, all I do is listen to one of your podcasts. Thank so, you. Brian, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. It is my pleasure always. And um, we'll talk soon. Thanks. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There, you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.